Hello, vagina. Cheers to being a woman. But womanhood, it's a jungle down there. Get ready to be real, raw, and totally uncensored as we explore the depths of health, sex, motherhood, and relationships. Strap in for those topics that make you cringe, make you blush, and make you want to hide your face. Welcome to the Hello Vagina Podcast. Vagina podcast with me today. We have a very special guest. We have Lauren Joyce. She is one of the world's top sex, love, and relationship coaches for successful women and the founder of The Magnetic Woman. Welcome to the show, Lauren. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for coming on. So tell me a little bit about how you get into being a sex, love, and relationship coach. Yeah. So obviously, you know, as a little girl, I wasn't like, I know what I'm going to do when I get older. I'm going to be a sex coach. Um, And quite honestly, it was like the exact opposite. I was raised Catholic. I went to Catholic school. So I grew up with a lot of shame and guilt and really unhealthy conditioning around what it means to be a woman, around my body, around sex, around pleasure. But I just obviously took all of that to be normal Um, went through high school, college, got a career and was doing all of the like proper to do's, like knocking them off the list. Mm -hmm. I was so good in my former career, like excelled to the top of my field, all these things. And yet there was always this like yearning of like, is this really it? Like this can't be it. I'm in my mid twenties. There has to be like more to life. Mm -hmm. And at the, around the same time, my dad passed away. And again, I was in my mid twenties and I had never experienced a loss that profound before. And I had no idea how to really handle it. And so I ended up joining a course around sexuality, sensuality, pleasure, and really just basically being an empowered woman, because I was looking for anything and everything to kind of like help me make sense of what I was experiencing and, and process the grief in a really healthy way. Mm -hmm. And so when the course was like, you'll live a more pleasurable life, I'm like, heck, uh, anything is more pleasurable than this. So like (laughs) sign me up. Right. But what I found was that really diving into pleasure, sensuality, really starting to look at my own sexuality, having more confidence in terms of my body, being a woman, my feminine, Mm -hmm. Not only did it help me really process my grief in a very healthy way, but it did actually elevate my life in so many areas. And the area that I found specifically changed the most was my relationship with men. Because I always felt really self-conscious. I would like overanalyze everything. I would constantly think of like how I could be good enough to whatever, you know, when it came to dating. And then it seemed like a light switch flipped. And anytime I went out, men were asking me out, asking me for my phone number, like following me out of restaurants in a very like non-starkery way, just to like (laughs) tell me, pay me a compliment. And I was like, holy cow, like this is this changed everything. And so I became engrossed in learning about masculine, feminine dynamics, communication, relationships, sensuality, pleasure, sexuality. And I knew I wanted to create something in the world that was bigger than the career I was in and was like really an expression of who I was. And so I found the world of online coaching and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. I love to travel. I love having like freedom of time. So I started a coaching business and I started to talk about how men would find, you know, pay me compliments and ask me out and do like want to wine and dine me or just thank me for being in my presence. And all of these women are like, oh my gosh, teach me how to do this. And I was like, okay, like this is so (laughs) fun. 
So obviously then I went and got so many additional certifications and trainings to really help women open up, heal, embrace, and really celebrate their sensuality and sexuality. Because no matter how you were raised, like our culture and society has in some way probably shamed women or you listening out of really feeling vibrant, alive, radiant, like sexually alive and turned on. Um, And so it's really about breaking down that conditioning, moving past any shame, guilt into being like the fullest expression of who you are as a woman. Yeah. And I think the thing is too, it's not, I guess society's made us think there's polar opposites. So you're either keep it completely hidden or you're, you know, mm-hmm. the slutty girl from the movie and that there yep. is no in-between where you just look like a normal everyday person that's just yep. in touch with themselves. Totally. Um, and we think that it has to be one or the other and that there is actually no middle ground. Right. And I think not only is that what we think, but we live that way, especially when it comes to like career, success, profession, and sexiness, right? We like put uh, this idea of being sexy or being sexual and we just like assign it to the bedroom and that's it, right? And, and a lot of women assign it only to a partnership. And so therefore, if you're single, if you're just like walking around every day, like you said, you feel like you can't be this kind of like vibrant, radiant person because that really is what it is. When you're in touch mm-hmm. with your sensuality and your sexuality, you are more alive. You're in touch with your life force energy, right? Like Mm -hmm. the whole point biologically of sex is to create new life in the world. So we have this storehouse of sexual energy inside of us at all times. But if we think we can kind of only open the door to that hallway once, you know, a week, Of course you're going to feel depleted, cut off, burnt out, disconnected, like you're not going to have a libido, all of these things that so many women experience on a daily basis. And unfortunately, the majority of women just take for normal because everybody around them is having that experience. Mm -hmm. And because we've been told that you don't want to be, in air quotes, that kind of woman who's like (laughs) sexy, sensual, and sexually alive. Yeah, trying to steal people's husbands, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I say that all the time. Stealer. I'm like, yeah, I'm like being sexy and embodying a level of sexiness at work does not mean that you're going to run the board meeting in lingerie, like laying on the boardroom table. It just yeah. means that you're like in touch with your power as a woman, your sexual power, right? Yeah. And like, and again, that doesn't mean that you're going to sleep your way to the top but that you're bringing more of a vibrancy and more of your truest expression into the world. Yeah, definitely. So you did touch on before the importance of um, the feminine energy and why so many women ignore um, Mm -hmm. or maybe are just even unaware of um, the feminine versus masculine energy that we sort of put out. Yeah, definitely. So one thing to remember, right, is that every single human has both feminine energy and masculine energy, right? So it doesn't matter, man, woman, however you identify, it's really the energy. And so it's also called like yin and yang energy. So it just depends on the wording that you want to use. But the masculine energy is more of the doing energy, right? It's like, there's a goal, I'm going to make it happen, I'm going to push forward, strategy, I tell my clients, like, it's all, it's usually up in the head. So if you feel like you're living in your head, you're typically living in your masculine energy. And again, I, t- I work with very successful women. So that has gotten them very far in their lives. It's gotten you very far in your life. And the thing to remember is that we've all grown up in a patriarchal culture, which means that the culture has put more emphasis and focus on masculine energy and men as being the gold standard, right? So feminine energy is really our connection to our emotions, our intuition, our creativity, our sense of being. And it's also, it's in the body, right? So it's our connection to our sensuality, all five of our senses 
And for us as women, it's our connection to our sexuality, our sexual energy. But again, the patriarchal culture has deemed women and feminine energy to be less than or not good enough. And so we, every single woman I feel like has grown up with some sort of not good enough story because in the culture, that is the message that we receive. Like you are other than man, you are woman, therefore you're not enough. You're not good enough. Your natural state of being is not enough. And so, again, because the culture has put more emphasis on masculine energy and men, we are very adaptable, like humans in general, but especially as women. So we've done really well at really putting our masculine energy forward because that's how we've been told to, we'll succeed in school, in business, in career, in whatever, But because our feminine energy is really like our natural essence and at least half of our makeup, right? Yeah. We feel constantly depleted, disconnected, cut off because if you think of yourself as like a battery, like you're only ever running at 50%. If you can even get all the way up, right? Yeah. So I tell my clients like your feminine energy and being connected to it, filling it up allows you to run at a hundred percent. It allows you to run from a space of my cup is overflowing and I can give versus what we've typically been taught, which is to give to everybody else and whatever crumbs are left over get like, that's what we get. Um, and feminine energy is so much more than just like taking a, bu- a bubble bath, right? It's yep. no acknowledging your emotions and moving through them in a healthy way and really accepting the full range of your emotions. It's being connected into your body, being in your body. It's embracing all of your senses and really experiencing life in that way. And again, it comes down to also embracing, celebrating, and healing your sexuality. Yeah. No, they're, they're all some definitely good points because I think we tend to, especially as women, we've sort of, we wear all the hats. And I think that that can also definitely push us towards that masculine um, space where we're wearing all the hats, we're holding it all together, we're in charge of mm-hmm. keeping the house running if you've got kids um, mm-hmm. and really pushes you towards that getting it done space as opposed yeah. to being able to be in touch with your feminine uh, mm-hmm. because we're, we're definitely sort of pushed in that way of being responsible for everything and everyone yeah. all the time. Yeah. Uh, and that's sort of the hat that they've given women. Yep. And then that comes out when it comes to sexual polarity, right? So if we think of sexual energy as magnets or as poles, one's positive, one's negative, right? And they attract each other. So masculine sexual energy will highly attract feminine sexual energy and vice versa. But if you're living in your masculine, like, there's no room for another masculine energy. So this is where you get like the glorified roommates, right? Like this is where you get really successful, powerful women saying that they can't find any man, quote, man enough for them. It's because you're being the man. Like you are running the masculine energy. And I think that really good men when they feel that, like they won't overpower your masculine energy because that feels very aggressive on yeah. an energetic level. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so what I say is like we as women, we have to move into our feminine energy first yeah. and then that will allow the man to move more into his masculine energy. Yeah. Oftentimes women are like, well, I want him to be more masculine. I'm like, you're not giving him any space to do that. You have to actually create the space first yeah. in order for that to happen. And so this is also what causes like that passion to fizzle out. It's what causes, again, women to be like, oh, I'm not finding someone who's man enough for me or like these people aren't good enough for me. It's because you're not actually giving the space because you're so afraid that if you stop doing everything, if you stop being in that masculine energy, like you won't be enough, you won't have enough, like you won't be loved, you won't be safe, right? There's all of these deeper fears that you have to address in order to allow yourself to give that space. Yeah. And can you push your partner into a feminine space? Like if you're being more masculine, because it's sort of that give and take, someone's got to give 
So can you be pushing? Your you can. I find that mo feminine space, and then obviously, then like you said before, you're like they're not man enough for me. But it's because you're instead of you embracing the feminine, you're pushing the feminine onto them. Yeah, you can. I find that a lot of men kind of go into neutral. Yeah. Like they're not really in their feminine energy because men have a lot of stuff around connecting to their own feminine energy, their emotions, their intuition, right? So I find that most men just kind of go into neutral, right? And then this, it continues to play into the dynamic of the woman being like, well, now I have to be the one that does all the things, takes care of the kids, like, you know, makes the dates, like pushes him to go forward. And I think that when, when women are cut off or not connected to your feminine energy, you're also not connected to your desires. You're not connected to this deeper sense of worth. And so then you struggle to ask for what you want. You struggle to even know what you want or how to ask for it. And then you're not processing your emotions, right? So then your partner will do something and everything that has been building up now has like over spilled over and you explode on them yeah. or you have this like low key resentment towards them that then explodes and yeah. they're like, why are you being so crazy? And then you're like, but I'm not being crazy. Look at everything I'm doing, you know? And we yeah. stay in these perpetual cycles. Yeah, no, that's definitely so true. And I think a lot of people will be able to relate to where that's been a situation that they've felt themselves. So touching on getting into that feminine energy space, um, I guess you were talking to me a bit before this about pleasure dependency. Can you touch a little bit more on what that is and what it means? Yeah. So pleasure dependency is this concept that I've created to really describe where relationship breakdowns happen often for us because we as women, we've not been told, given permission, and really shown in a lot of ways that pleasure is our life force. Like when a woman is living life from a space of pleasure, she feels more fulfilled. Like you're not in a constant state of self-criticism, self-judgment. You're more connected to your worth. You're more radiant, all of these things. And pleasure doesn't always mean eating chocolate cake on your couch and not doing anything. Like it could mean that, but it also means, you know, processing your emotions in a healthy way, looking at, even if there's things that you quote unquote have to do, how can you make this experience more sensual, bring one of your five senses into it so that you're actually fulfilling like a sense of pleasure. Plus pleasure obviously creates like oxytocin and lowers our stress levels and all of these things. But we've been taught that pleasure is some kind of reward for hard work, for suffering, for like, quote unquote, being enough, doing enough, being perfect. So oftentimes women will like give themselves pleasure in some areas, but they have yet to do the work on claiming pleasure in their own sexuality. So if you don't have a relationship to your own sexuality, then chances are you're seeking sexual pleasure only through your partner. Mm -hmm. And any kind of dependency in a relationship creates an an imbalance and will fuel resentment. So if you're living in a state of what I call pleasure dependency, meaning you don't have your own connection to pleasure in your life and more specifically sexual pleasure, then you're going to see your partner as the only source. So if things are a little strained, if maybe there's a little bit of a dry spell, if maybe you're both tired or stressed, and then you're not getting, quote unquote, what you think you need to be getting from this person, you're going to feel even worse, even less fulfilled, even more angry. And so again, this idea that you are somehow dependent on the other person to give you this sense of pleasure, of orgasm, of sexual experience creates this dependency really which then tanks passion and tanks the ability to have true connection and intimacy as equal partners um and so really the antidote to this is starting to create a relationship with your own sexuality like taking time to self-pleasure regularly and that doesn't just mean 
to masturbate or to orgasm. It can mean setting a timer for 15 minutes and just like lovingly touching your body. It could mean, um, you know, breathe, like breath work or meditation. It definitely will mean some kind of healing in your own sexuality. Because I find that so many women have a story that if I'm sexy, I won't be safe in the world. And this story, right, has been quote unquote proven to be true because how many women experience sexual assault or some kind of violence and then are blamed for it. Yeah. But I find the opposite to be true. When a woman is really in ownership of her own sexiness, her own sex, sex, sexuality, you feel safer in the world because you're more tuned into your intuition. So you know when someone or something is unsafe, mm -hmm. you have clearer boundaries you're more willing and able to stand for your worth. Um, and so my personal experience has been the more I've embraced my own sexiness, I have 100% felt safer in yeah. the world. Because anyone who comes up and tries to cross a boundary, I don't feel this sense of obligation or owing them yeah. because I look sexy, right? Yeah. But when you stay in a state of disempowerment in that, then that is when you feel obligation or that there's somehow your responsibility, that their desire is your responsibility. So we don't want to feel that way about men. And yeah. men don't necessarily, they don't want to feel that way about us either. Like you may have sensual sexual desire and like he doesn't want to feel responsible for it, right? But if you're not having your own relationship with your sexuality, then you are putting that responsibility on him. Yeah. No, that's definitely some good points for women to think about. Because I think to, you know, self-pleasure, it's that I think we are very uneducated in yeah. sex in general. Um, you and I were talking just before um, we came on about, you know, the amount of education that we get through school. And obviously it's school, so they're not going to actually teach you, you know, the way to pleasure from sex. It's just the biological way that, you know, yeah. a man and a woman make a baby because yeah. and, and sex being taught from a procreation point of view. Mm -hmm. but we're not mm -hmm. taught how to have sex, how to pleasure the other person, how to pleasure ourselves because, it, yep. you know, it's not something that your parents, you know, your mum doesn't sit you down and, you know, and you probably yep. don't how to pleasure a man from your mom because then you're imagining uh, doing it with your dad and that's just for sure <laughs> it's not a good visual that you want to experience um so where you know if you aren't comfortable talking to girlfriends and I think for a lot of people there's so much taboo around sex that it's a private thing that you do that where are you meant to have learned any of these things so exactly. you don't know what you don't know um, exactly and it just perpetuates the cycle of the, the shame and the shame because you don't know that everybody feels the same. Nobody feels educated. Um, when yeah. the only education sources we have is fake sex in movies and porn. yeah, right. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I hear from women who reach out to me, who join my community, who hire me is like, I feel so embarrassed that I don't know this. And I'm like, where w exactly would you have learned this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. when you can kind of remove the shame and the embarrassment that, oh, I should already know this thing, yeah. then you can actually come to this space with a, a fresher perspective of like getting the information that you desire. Like female pleasure has been left out of sex and, and talking about sex and educating about sex, like for thousands of years, you know yeah. what I mean? And so we, and the, I use the word self-pleasure because to me, masturbation is like very goal oriented and it implies that you need to have an orgasm. And then yeah. people have a lot of, have a very narrow view of what orgasm is. Like we've been taught of what orgasm and climax is off of the male body, right? Like, yeah where women can experience very different orgasms and a variety of different orgasms. So when I talk about self-pleasuring, I do talk about just experiencing pleasure in your body for like a specific amount of time and taking time to really connect to your body to really research what does your body like. Like you might find that, oh, if I 
you know, stroke like my lower belly, like that just sends fireworks through my entire body. But yeah. how would you have known that? Because sex typically also with many couples is very goal oriented. Yes. You orgasm, I orgasm. At least one of us should orgasm for it to be quote unquote successful. Like yeah. most people don't take time to just play and research and investigate like what feels really good and have like more of a sensual experience versus like a goal oriented sexual experience. So that's why I use the word self-pleasuring because to me, it takes the goal orientation out of it and yeah. allows it to just be an experience of pleasure. Yeah. No, that's definitely a really good one um, for women to, and a different way to think about it. Cause I think we all sort of do look at sex from that goal um, orientated point of view where it's literally orgasm because I guess yeah. that's from the limited information that we have. And like you mentioned, I think most people would actually think if neither of you orgasmed or when something happens and sex doesn't finish in an orgasm, there are those feelings of like that was unsuccessful. I know yeah. if my husband will probably be super embarrassed that I mentioned that, but like, he like that it's just been you know for whatever reason like sometimes it just doesn't sometimes your body does not yeah right and totally you know, penises don't want to work anymore they just want a nap yeah um and that yeah. you know to me I find that to be fine but there's been you know a time that I can think of that you know he, he took it really hard and was like I don't I don't know what's going on I'm like it's fine like it was still yeah. pleasure while it was going on, you know? And I think that that's, I, I don't think there's anyone that hasn't experienced a time where that hasn't happened to them, but there is definitely sure. that feeling where, um, and especially for men, I guess, because they're sort of taught in the same way that without reaching the goal, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a success. And that you yeah. found at it, like that you can't actually just enjoy the pleasure that was yeah. without the goal. And and most women don't even know how to feel a yes or a no in their body, right? Because how many times have we overrode our not having a desire in order to pleasure our partner or because we think it'll be easier because we think we should. So then there's also like a mistrust within ourselves, within our bodies and I say that because like, obviously I have I very much had that experience, right? Like yeah. you have to kind of rebuild that trust within your body. And that's also really an incredible opportunity that you have in self-pleasuring, right? Because yeah. you can then like really start to tune into your body and depending on how you self-pleasure, right? So I also teach Jade Egg um, and have a Jade Egg course. So in teaching women around the Jade Egg, like I always start with like, ask your body, does your body want to experience this practice right now? And yeah. if it's a no, great, maybe stop and just meditate or yeah. like ask your body but what it needs. And so it's also a really incredible opportunity to rebuild that trust within yeah. yourself and within your body and really feel into like, what is your yes and what is your no? Um, yeah. Because that will also lead to more satisfying sexual experiences because you can stay more in your body during the experience. And yeah, everybody has had situations, multiple situations, right? Where like things yeah. don't quote unquote work. Like it's not going to be movie sex all the time yeah. or probably ever. And so when you can take that pressure off, when you can learn to like laugh if something is funny or like you're trying yeah. to change positions and maybe you like meet them or like you know what I mean yeah when you can just be in the experience and have the experience versus like is this successful or are we like checking the box off yeah then it becomes more fulfilling yeah I think there's that comparative like I think everybody has those embarrassing sex moments where like you for sure like, you're meant to swallow you but I feel like because you're so embarrassed about what's happened because you don't know that that's completely normal and vaginas make sounds that sound like farts and you're like yeah. horrified, especially if it's early on in your relationship. It's just, you know, For it's sure. it happens to everybody. Too much air in the space, you know. Yeah. It makes a sound like, but it's, you know, it's so normal. It happens yes. to everybody, but that, that still feeling of being horrified and like, this is your partner. Like this is, 
somebody that it should be that open space where you don't need to feel embarrassed about the person that you're with and these things because they're just normal it's it's not always like you said it's not always movie sex if ever right nor should it be like I was I had a chance and like rewatched a 90s rom-com the other day and the like quote-unquote teenagers in the movie were about to have sex and they were like kissing and then he was like don't you need foreplay and she was like no I don't and I was like oh my god no wonder like no wonder we have such ideas about sex this is what we learned that we should just be like no I don't need any kind of foreplay yeah I think it's like outfits like to me putting an outfit on is such a time like why would I go take my outfit get changed to walk out so you you could take it off again. And I realized role play in that, you know, you could, if you were into that, you could definitely make it more of a thing. But to me, I'm like, why would I change my clothes? Why don't I just take them off? Yeah, (laughs) totally. Something else on to take them off again. But it's about finding those things that work for you. But I feel like where dress up is something that guys got from movies, but girls for the most part feel stupid. Like I don't want to put on this cheap from yeah. China little maid outfit like who wears that what what for sure like and I think told- I think that that is also very much like getting out of the frame of mind that you need to do something for the other person and really shifting into a space of what turns me on what makes me feel sexy? Because that is ultimately what your partner wants. Like your partner, whether you're single and dating and looking for a partner, whether you're new in a relationship and a long-term relationship, like your partner, potential partner is going to find you sexiest when you feel sexiest. So really getting out of this idea of like, oh, men really like lingerie and checking in like, do I like it? And it might be a no, it might be a yes. And if it's a no, I would even encourage you to investigate it. Like, why am I like a no? Am I a no because like, it feels like a waste of time and what makes me feel sexiest is just being naked. Awesome, cool. If you're like, I'm a no because I don't want to be held to these standards. But it's like, okay, well then what would make you feel sexy? Maybe it's an oversized t-shirt and booty shorts. Maybe it's nothing, right? But really coming at your sexuality, sensuality, pleasure with more of like an investigative perspective and really looking at like, do I really believe this? Do I really like this? Because we just haven't been given permission to actually investigate this area of our lives. We've just been told that you have sex, you should be good at it, but don't talk about it. Don't really learn about it. And if you go to try and learn about it, then that probably means you're flawed or something's wrong with you or you're with the wrong person. And so it leads to, like we said, all of this shame, all of this embarrassment and all of this guilt. And I find that so many women and men are really in a lot of pain emotionally, maybe even physically when it comes to sex and feel like they don't have really anywhere to go to get information or they have pretty good sex lives and they want to have even better ones. But then they're like, well, that feels kind of weird because really the only people who seek out information on this, like, you know, are weird or abnormal or whatever. Right. But our sexuality is something that continually grows and continually changes. And so having that relationship within yourself, that is, a number one top priority yeah no that's definitely true and I think too you know we females definitely approach sex from an emotional point of view if we're not in the mood then there it's just not not happening you know we also yeah. experience that um where guys you know they could be not in the mood but can get in the mood relatively quickly or at least just do it because they just seem to be a lot more ready to just be able to just just do it. Where I think for females, it's a lot more difficult to put your space, put yourself into that just do it space. Yeah. Um, for us, that that emotional connection is definitely there. Um, and I think you, you definitely touched on a good point on you know how do we awaken that connection to your sexuality and your sexual energy. 
Um, because I think for a lot of us, we sort of don't know how to get in touch with that. How do we, how do we get in touch with that energy? Yeah. Sort of touch into those emotions that we have so that we're in a better space to want to connect. Yeah. So first I want to touch on your point of like, we need the emotional connection and think about it, right? Like think physically of how this works. The penis goes into the vagina. So we are inviting someone into our body. Mm. So men will use sex to create connection because they are like, and they are physically plugging in. Yeah. Pun not intended, but intended, right? So they are like plugging into a connection and women need to feel connected before we allow that to happen, right? Till we can fully open our body. So it makes sense yeah. that you're like, oh. plus, again, we have a lot more conditioning around our sexuality. We tend to be a lot more shut down in our bodies. Yeah. We also go through our menstrual cycle. So every day we're experiencing different levels of hormones, mm-hmm. not to mention for most women, the majority of housework and raising children is still on your shoulders, plus you're working a full-time job. So there's a lot of things that really impact and influence our ability as women to feel ready, to feel sexually open, to feel like turned on. So all of that included, right? One of the best ways is to start adding more pleasure into your life because pleasure again, lowers cortisol, creates oxytocin. So you're going to feel happier. You're going to feel vibrant. You're going to feel more alive. Then you start to layer in you having regular self-pleasuring practices or taking time to connect to your body, start figuring out what your body likes. Then you're going to feel more turned on, more wanting to have sex with your partner because you're all like, when you get out of the pleasure dependency cycle, which means you're not looking to them as the source of your pleasure and your orgasm, but you feel really full already, then you feel more open to having an incredible experience with your partner because yeah. it's not a do or die situation. It's not yeah. like I need to get all of my pleasure and orgasm from you right now. Yeah. And if I don't, then like, I'm just going to be more depleted. This was more of a give than it was fulfilling for me, yeah. right? Yeah. So pleasure, 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 pleasure. Also really connecting physically to a pussy, vagina. I use the word pussy. Yeah. Um, but starting to form a relationship, actually a relationship with your pussy. Yeah. Talking to her giving her compliments. Like we've been taught to really live like from the neck up, right? Maybe if you've done a lot of work on yourself and you've gone through some, like a good amount of therapy, maybe the heart up, but there's so many women who are still like frozen from the waist down. And so looking at your pussy or your vagina, right? Whatever words you like to use, starting to like actually praise her, looking at her and like paying her compliments, finding what's beautiful about it. So many women are embarrassed by what they look like because again, we've only seen pussies in porn or heard about like different surgeries that women are having. Right. And again, there's this idea of like some sort of gold standard. And so it's forming that relationship with yourself and yeah. and really starting to live more fully in your body which again incorporating more pleasure and it could be simple shifts like when you're drinking coffee not watching tv and just actually having the experience of drinking coffee like even if it's for 3 seconds cuz yeah. think about it if you pour your cup of coffee and you're like inhaling it while you're checking your email and doing all of these other things you're not present for any of those experiences. No. But if you pour this cup of coffee, let's say you put a little dash of cinnamon in it, and then there's silence. And for like five seconds, you just smell it and taste it and like feel it. That's yeah. a completely different start to your day, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's also what I mean by pleasure. Like, approaching every moment, every experience, like what would make this more pleasurable for me? Maybe you have to like do something that you don't want to do, but if you knew that at the end of it, you got to eat a piece of chocolate cake or you took a dance break partway through it, or 
something to make it more pleasurable. That starts to fill your cup up more. So then also like you're not coming into an experience where you feel like you're giving from depletion and breaking the pleasure dependency cycle where you're seeing yourself as your source of your pleasure and your orgasm. Yeah. Not your partner. Yeah. No, that's all amazing stuff. So something that I love to ask my guests are what are the common myths? Because I think uh, there's just so many, especially in this field. But what are probably some of the most most common um, that you hear from um, the people that you work with? So I think one of the biggest myths is that you're alone in what you're experiencing. So for women, often they come to me and they're like, this is my experience. And honestly, it doesn't even matter what the experience is. There's how many billions of people in this world. Other people are experiencing that same thing right now. So the myth that you're alone in your suffering, in your pain, in your lack of desire, in your low libido, in your desire for more sex and your partner's not on board, right? Whatever it is, it's not wrong and you're not alone. So I think that is one of the biggest myths that keeps so many women in a space of shame and embarrassment. Um, I think another myth is that your pleasure and your orgasm comes from someone else. I like always laugh when someone's like, that man couldn't give me an orgasm. And I'm like, no, you didn't experience your orgasm with him. That's very different. They are not the source. Yeah. And when we can take that pressure off of another person and off of a relationship, it really allows the dynamic to shift. Um, I think another huge myth is that if we're sexy, that somehow we're inviting mistreatment or bad behavior into our lives. Mm-hmm. Um, another myth is that we are responsible for a man's desire. So if I'm sexy... And a man now has desire for me. I owe him a date, my number, X, Y, Z, right? Fill in the blank. So realizing that your sexiness is A, a state of being. It's not something that you do to get, but it's a state of being. And you do it for you, right? Like you aren't responsible for someone else's reaction or perception of you. Yeah. Um. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but <laughs> I feel no, like I don't, all, I don't want to really overload them. Yeah, no, they're all really good ones. And I think that that's definitely something first, you know, like you said, your first one of you're, you're not alone. Um, yeah. And that is in, in so many ways, you know, there are so many people in the world that someone is guaranteed to have had the same thing the, that you're going through, to have thought the same thing. Um, it's so common to feel disconnected in your partnership um, and to, you know, it starts with communication and knowing what you actually want because um, whether it's sort of working on to to be able to communicate what you want to somebody else, you have to actually know first really what it is that you want. Um, Yeah. That's sort of what we're, the biggest thing that we're not taught is to really, look into ourselves and find out what we want to then be Mm -hmm. able to ask for what we want. Yeah. Awesome. Just to finish up, what are some of the best resources that you've uh, found along the way? YouTube is an incredible resource and there's lots of women out there providing really incredible information around sex and sexuality. So my very first mentor was Regina Thomas Hauer, Mama Gina. And she has this incredible book called Pussy, A Reclamation. And that is just amazing. And she's been doing this work for over 20 years. And she is a freaking powerhouse, right? Um, Some of my other favorite books are Come As You Are, which is great to teach women about how stress and different life factors affect and impact our sexuality and our ability to be open to sex. Um, and another favorite of mine is sex at dawn, which I'm such like a nerd and I love learning and I love history yeah. and it is like a historical and anthropo- anthropological perspective yeah. of human sexuality. So 
I think all of those books are really great for normalizing your experience, normalizing things and really starting to move past shame and embarrassment. Um, I have like a resource list on my website of all the other books that I recommend in all the different areas because I love to read. Yeah. Um, and so many of the women in my community are very similar and like giant nerds and love to read as well. So um, I have a whole resource list on my website that you can check out too. Perfect. So for anyone that's wanting to find some more uh, information about what Lauren does, you can find her over uh, Instagram at The Magnetic Woman um, and also across at her website. So over on the Hello Vagina podcast website, I will pop all of her links um, over there so you can go check out her resources and any other information that you're interested in finding out after our chat today. But thank you so much for coming on, Lauren. It was an awesome chat and I'm sure that our guests, our women, sorry, have definitely got some some huge benefit from. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And whoever is listening, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to this. And I'm so grateful that you created this space of this podcast to have these conversations and really create a space where women can get information on issues that are taboo that shouldn't be and, and to just normalize their experience in womanhood. Definitely. Thank you so much. And we will see you all soon. Bye. Thank you so much for joining another episode of the Hello Vagina podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode and you're notified when a new episode comes out. Also, we would love for you to tap some stars for us and to leave a review so that others can see how much you enjoyed the podcast and what we're all about. So don't forget, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, stay beautiful.